All right, let's get into chapter four of the leadership space. Now, I left the drawing up that I had done in chapter three because it's relevant to finish the story. Remember the story. I was in a litigation conference call and one of the teammates that I had been working with as attorney, an lit, experienced litigator, was talking to uh, the, our mutual client and I had interrupted him, right? And so I had said, I had just about to say something because I thought the client was getting confused. And so Bill said, Brian, stop. And then I went into almost like a rage and I was about to just light him up on the phone and tell him, give him a piece of my mind, you know? And I decided, okay, hold up. I, I needed to, I realized in that moment I needed to pause. And so why am I telling you that story? Well, there's an ending I want to get to, which will bring this all together. Because honestly, if I didn't practice what I'm about to teach you here, which is that between stimulus and response, there is a space that determines our future. That in the moment between when we, we get hit with some stimulus, like the guy says, Brian, stop. And my response, which I wanted to be, F you, you stop, I'm taking over. Like I wanted to do that. But in this moment between stimulus and response, I recognized that my power was going to be uh, essentially rooted in how I treated this other person in front of our mutual client, the tone that I brought, the energy I brought, the language that I brought, the whole of my reaction was gonna determine whether or not our relationship was going to continue in a successful way to lead to a successful outcome from our mutual client. That was what was at stake. And a lot of money too, honestly. So in that moment, that space between stimulus and response, which is your leadership space, it's the space where you have power to influence your future, okay? I realized, whoa, I've got something at play that is driving my reaction. Like I was pissed, man, and I was like deeply pissed. And I was like, something's going on that has nothing to do with this phone call. It's something much deeper. And that's when I realized that in that gap between stimulus and response, there is a filter. And in chapter four, I call that the interpretation filter. Okay, the interpretation filter. And well, what is that? The interpretation filter. And some of you that have maybe a lot of training and self-development and you've done some different things, you might already know where I'm going with all this, okay? But if you haven't heard of this before, I wanna develop it a little bit so that you can fully understand and be able to apply it. The interpretation filter is fundamentally our, I call it, our, it's your mindset. Your mindset is an interpretation filter and it is a way of essentially sort of filtering the information that's coming into you so that you know exactly how to respond to it very quickly. So for example, I'll give you the beginning of the chapter. I told a story about these three professionals that are in a helicopter and they're flying over the Amazon. And so the first person, right, they're flying over the Amazon, the blades are thumping and they're in the helicopter and they've got their headset on. And the first person looking down is an anthropologist. And she looks down at the Amazon and she thinks, whoa, this is such an incredibly beautiful place. Look at all these rich wonders that we don't even know what's there. Like what jewels of resources are down there and, and what, what ancient people might have lived there and how can we you know, discover all these things and protect it? You know? And so that's the anthropologist. The way she's seeing that Amazon jungle is through her mindset, her training, her view of it is a certain way. Well, the second person in the helicopter is an engineer. Right, and this guy's thinking to himself, you know what, there's a lot of freaking resources down there, but there's a lot of uh, area we gotta traverse, and I don't know how easy it's gonna be building the, to build the roads. You know, there's a lot of gold, there's a lot of other elements, and uh, you know, it's gonna be expensive. How can we get the trucks in and out of there and the crew in and out of there with the minimum amount of damage to the team, right, and the maximum amount of value, right? And so the engineer is looking at the Amazon same thing the anthropologist is looking at, but he's looking at it from a completely different viewpoint, a different frame, a different filter, and he's picking up on different uh, environmental you know, cues. And then the third person in the helicopter is an attorney, and she's looking at the exact same thing. And she's not thinking about all the resources and all the gems and all the roads and all the costs. She's just seeing all the liability and all the ways the company could get sued by the government, by the indigenous tribes, by shareholders, whatever. That's all she sees is liability. And how can we escape liability by doing different things, okay? So the point is that each of the three professionals, they're all looking at the same thing, but they're seeing three different realities based on their mindset, their viewpoint, their training. 
And so that is very important to understand that you have a mindset. You have a filter through which you view the world. And I call it the interpretation filter. The filter gives you your interpretation of what you're looking at. Is it valuable? Is it not? Is it important? Is it not? Is it a threat? Is it an opportunity? Okay, so that's the filter, the interpretation filter, and it's based on three different elements, which by understanding these elements, you will gain power over the filter and you can adjust it to your own advantage. So the three elements are judgments, stories, and points of view. I'll just put them over here, okay? Judgments, stories, and points of view. So what do I mean by that? Your judgment, just take it at face value. Your judgment is essentially whether you think something is good or bad, whether it's valuable or not. So maybe you see someone homeless on the street and you have a judgment of them. Oh, they're lazy. Oh, well, they're a problem. You know, and you don't understand maybe if you got into their world, maybe you'd understand, oh, they're not lazy. Maybe they have a mental condition. It's not about lazy. It's that they need help. Or it could be that maybe they just want to be out there and they don't want to, you know, participate in a program because they just want to be out there and be, feel free, whatever it is. But the point is when you look at something Thing, you instantly create a judgment around it and it shapes the way you see it and feel about it and therefore react to it. The point is not that you have judgments. The point is to be aware of what your judgment is so that you can reframe that judgment to give yourself the power to respond in a way that you want to. And I would hope it's positive, but however you want to respond, the point is to become conscious of it, right? We're building off the idea of self-awareness. You want to have the awareness of what's happening in your filter, right? What is self-awareness? Self-awareness is the power to observe your own psychology in action. And what does that mean ultimately? To observe the filter, filtering what you see, which gives you how you feel, okay? So your judgment. Your second, uh, the second point is stories, a story. And a story is an internal narrative that you tell yourself that gives you the meaning of what you're looking at. So just a simple example, maybe you're in the line to go to the movies, right? And you're supposed to meet your brother or your sister or your friend and they're late. And so you're thinking like, well, do I buy the tickets or not? They haven't texted me. Like, what the hell's going on? Like, are they rude? Like, are they coming? Am I, maybe they're in an accident. Oh, Maybe they're in an accident. What should I do? You know, when you start to freak out because like it's not like them to be late and not communicate. And so you start to tell yourself a story that there's a major problem and it starts to give you like heart palpitations. And then just as you're about to make the decision, all of a sudden you get a text and they go, hey, so sorry, my phone died. You know, I was a little bit of traffic. I was a little late. I'm sorry, but my phone died. And it's like, okay, okay. There was just traffic, phone died, and not an accident, everything's cool. Okay, that is all happening in your mind. It's all happening inside your filter that you're having this whole internal narrative, your story that you're telling yourself about the situation, okay? Now, point of view, point of view. And I'm coming at this idea of point of view from a very easy, natural place. It's just basically where you're standing while you're looking at the event, right? So if you're standing and looking at an event from your own point of view, you're gonna see it a certain way. Whereas if you're able to come over here and look at the event from the other person's point of view, well then you're gonna understand it in a totally different way, give you a totally different reaction. Like let's say you come home and you know you say hi to your partner and you know he or she screams at you and says, "Where the hell have you been? You know, or what's happening? Like my." The kids have been driving me crazy. And so from your point of view, you're thinking, well, why are you attacking me? I just got home. I just put in a full work day. Like I'm tired too. Like why do I have to take this kind of abuse or energy? And you think of it as abuse or negative energy because you're coming from your perspective. Because from your point of view, it makes perfect sense. Why in the hell is this other person yelling at you? It makes no sense. But once you get over here, let's say you calm down, maybe you have something to eat, you have a glass of wine, whatever, and you can finally like just Get out of your point of view, go over to her point of view or his point of view, and then you listen. And you're like, okay, what happened for you today? And then your partner says, oh my God, you're not gonna believe it. You know, I got this huge problem at work. It was driving me crazy. They were, for, you know, I had to respond. I had to get things done. And the kids are spilling things all over the place. And apparently now my mother is gonna, you know, it, it wants to stay with us for a month, which just your partner is having pressure that is causing her to react. And it really wasn't about you at all. Maybe it was an overreaction. Maybe she needs to apologize or he needs to apologize. But the point is by you stepping over from from your point of view, what the hell are you attacking me for into, whoa, you actually had a really rough day. Let me give you some compassion and love. Just the fact of shifting from your point of view to them can free you from the reaction that you're having because you're aware that your filter was giving you that reaction or response. 
by you becoming self-aware of your point of view, where you're looking at it from, you can free yourself from the emotional reaction, which is the whole point of this, okay? So now, let's come back to that litigation story because now to bring it all together. So remember, I'm on the phone, and remember, I had been brought in to this little team of attorneys to help the client. The client asked me to come in and make it easier for him to communicate with the team and to get the outcome he wanted because he felt a little bit like, you know, stopped up in the process. I had made a, I had created a good relationship with the other guys, but in this moment, Bill says to me, Brian, stop, and I'm like just furious, and I can feel the blood about to boil in my body, and I'm like, no, 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 you're not going to talk to me like that, bro, like that's not happening, but I paused right? And how did I do that? I applied self-awareness. I became the observer of my interpretation filter. I was observing what was happening in my mind in the space between stimulus and response. And I saw something that shifted me a lot. And here's what I saw. I realized that Bill, who was older than me and, and much more experienced, he had become a sort of father figure in my subconscious mind. Right? And you got to remember that all of this stuff is happening in the subconscious. It's not conscious. It's happening beneath the surface. You can't even really see it until you shine the light of self-awareness down into the depths of the ocean of your being so you can see what's happening down there. And we don't live down there. We live at the surface. We got to do stuff. We don't live down there. You know, we're not meditating all the time. We're, we're living. But I shine the light of self-awareness down to the subconscious by choosing to observe my judgment story point of view, right? I chose to look down in there. And I saw that Bill had become a father figure and I had a reaction not to Bill, but a reaction to my own dad. And what I saw was I was literally having the experience of being a five, six, seven year old kid when my dad, when I was growing up, and I love my dad, my dad's an incredible guy, but when I was growing up, you know, he was an entrepreneur and he was always doing business. And so he was always busy doing different things and like maybe I was like trying to talk to him and a phone call would come through and he had to cut off the conversation and talk on the phone or and I was trying to play a game or something and he had to rush out to take care of a client and I always, honestly, the truth is, I felt like I didn't matter to my dad. I did and we've talked about it and we've cleaned it up, but I still have this feeling inside sometimes that gets triggered and, you know, I just felt like I'm not important. And when I feel like I'm not important, I get furious. It really upsets me because I feel like my dad doesn't love me or something at a deep, like a child level. You know, so, and meanwhile, you know, having learned all this, I have talked to my dad and, and we have a great relationship now, but sometimes it still twinges me. And I'm like, oh, so I had this moment where I realized my judgment was I'm not important. Bill's basically saying, stop, Brian, you're not important. Right? I told myself a story that I have nothing of value to give to this team. I have nothing of value to say. And I was like, well, that's bullshit. I'm not not important. I don't have, you know, and I wanted to fight for my own value. I wanted to prove myself. But I realized that none of that was relevant to the litigation. It was about me being five years old trying to prove to my dad that I'm valuable and important to my dad. Bill's not my dad. And so by seeing that, I was like, okay, hang on. Let me shift my point of view. And the most magical way to do it is to go into a contribution consciousness, the contribution mindset. Remember the third C, choice, context, contribution. By going into the contribution mindset, I thought, wait a second, this moment is not about me and whether I'm important or not. This moment's about the team and whether or not the client can get the outcome that they need. And that moment, I just shifted out of the reaction. I cleaned, I, I cleared out the filter and I was just present with the team. And I had shifted into, I'm here to be a leader. I'm here to be a contribution. I'm here to add value. And it resolved the whole thing. I ultimately didn't say a word and I just let the thing flow. I could have arrested that moment. I could have just obliterated it and ruined everything, but I didn't. I was able to apply the leadership space. I was able to step behind my interpretation filter and choose to be a powerful contribution on the team. And ultimately that litigation went very well and we won the case. So this is a very powerful next step in developing your ability to show up as the being you want to be, as the influence you want to be, as the teammate, as the leader you want to be. That's chapter four. Let's go.